into this series, though. We're jumping into our first draft. This pick ban is already underway. Take a look through what we've got here. FPX actually going to be banning a couple of these farming junglers that we were talking about being favorable for Bo, the Lilia, and that Nidalee taken off the board, as well as the Camille respect ban towards Bin. And then this Rise is banned away from Doom B. Rise is not that strong of a meta pick, but Doom B's been playing it and he's been looking good. Yeah, and it's very much that roam heavy style that we still expect from Doom B. And I, I don't fully agree with just banning it outright. I think it's it's a bit of a niche pick and why we haven't seen it a huge amount. But Doom B has been absolutely exceptional on it. And looks like Sunni just don't want to deal with it. However, for FPX, they will go towards the early jungle focus towards Bow. We're not really going towards the likes of the Graves and the Karthus that we were talking about already. But certainly Olaf, incredibly strong in the current meta. Uh, I want to nick a term that I heard on the NALCS, this drain tank where you get a very, very tanky, thanks to that Gore Drinker, being able to pop that, get a whole heap of health back. It makes it very difficult for you to deal with, still in the early stage, but that scaling into the mid game is still potent and it's still something that you've got to worry about. All right, well, we do have the Misfortune on the side of FPX and the Seraphine will be locked in. This is a combo that we've seen a tiny bit before. TT's bot lane played it in the one win that TT have managed to garner for themselves this season so far. Incredibly strong in the team fight, incredibly strong in the 2v2. If you can land that ult combo, it's kind of like Sona MF, honestly. In fact, the ult combo is basically the same, just longer range. Yeah, and basically all you're trying to do here is poke out your opponents. You oftentimes see the Comet come in from the Misfortune. You've also got the Comet or the Summonary coming through on the Seraphine as well. And especially against a short range AD carry like the Aphilios, you're getting hit with like make it rains. You're getting hit with the E off the Seraphine, Q's off Seraphine. You're just, your health bar is gone. And you're just like, I hate my lane. I hate my life. So certainly for Juan Fong and on, they're going to be looking to see if they can get these aggressive hooks, see if they can trade, because otherwise you're just going to be whittled down and find a, a really difficult time to deal with how strong the bottom lane for FPX is going to be. Yeah, and uh, we can see SOFM has gone back to an older comfort pick where he wants to be this hard engage tool for the team. That has been one of the struggles for Sooning, so maybe this will shore up that weakness. In the meantime, though, they start to focus these bands further in on towards Stu and B. Banning away his rumble. Yeah, the rumble gonna be taken off the board. I'm not surprised here. Again, the the comfort picks, as you said, for Doombie, but also those very Rome heavy uh mid laners are what are being targeted here by Sunin. And I like this, I think, especially when you're looking at like how strong this bottom lane is, especially when you hit that level six, the ability to get that very long lane range ultimate with the Seraphine can cause a lot of issues for you. And also enabling this Olaf substantially with the ability for Seraphine to speed him up, give him the healing. Like this is going to be very difficult for Sunin's bot lane to deal with. So you just don't want to add in Doombie to that mix as well. I'm very surprised to see an Aurelia back come through here from FBX as the final ban. I do wonder if that's something Angel's been playing in solo queue or something. I think it might be. Oh, actually, I thought it was going to be an early NAR pick. Remember what you were talking about with the Aurelia being a nice counter pick to the NAR? I was thinking that maybe they're going I, for the blind pick. I was talking about Yasuo before. Yeah, true. Well, Aurelia does the same job, but either way, taken off the board here and it means that for FBX's side, they can go towards that early NAR. So nice job here. It means that Again, you've got like some nice slows, a good engage tool. Also a top lane that you can look to play around early here as Bo. Depending on what the top lane matchup is, we saw it again in the last game where um, as if you go towards something like an Orn or something along these lines that you can get shoved in early as this Nar, you can end up going for these early dives and especially with the amount of raw damage and the amount of slows that comes out from Olaf and Nar, it can be very difficult to escape from a gank of that potency. You can see Doom B is having a whale of a time on your screen here as they lock him the victor in. And you can already see this composition from FBX. They would like to group up. That's a hell of a wombo combo they've got going for themselves if all of these ultimates can align. But we'll we'll go into the win conditions in a moment. Sooning though, looking towards this top lane matchup. Hovering a Wukong, which we've really not seen much of the Wukong this season so far, but it will be locked in. I think this is maybe the first time I've seen Wukong versus Na. Yeah, this is something that is very, very strong for Bin, though. The Wukong, you've got the innate, uh, the innate rejuve, rejuvenation, Re regen, regen, whatever, healing. And you also get the ability to get the armor <laughs> as well off the passive. 
the ability to jump in as well with the E and get a lot of damage off, then skitter away thanks to that invisibility, means that it can be pretty difficult for Nuggery when you get a couple of levels has been to trade effectively. And the chase down potential as well when you hit level six as Wukong gives so much pressure. So when you think about as well, adding Angel into that mix with the Twisted Fate, you've got a very potent top lane dive at level six that you're gonna have to be very, very careful as Nuggery. Yeah, there's a lot to watch out for here, and this is the matchup. You can see them on your screen. Nuggery and Bin, the two world's final top laners right here. And Nuggery may be alone without the rest of Damwon. Bin has the support of the rest of his world final squad. And I think uh, Nuggery needs to be a little cautious, not just because of the draft, but this suiting squad might just want a little bit of revenge. I wouldn't be surprised to see some... Uh, maybe overzealous dives towards the top side from Zudi. Yeah, I, that's where I'm looking at straight off the bat. I mean, you're already looking at what is probably going to be some sort of 1-4 composition where you are having been collect a side wave and join in with the rest of the group, but Angel certainly is going to be putting a lot of attention towards this top side. It, there is the opportunity to go bot as well. It's just a little bit more difficult when you've got so much uh, running away, when you've got so much uh, escape tools on the, the misfortune of the Seraphine. Well, welcome to Summoner's Rift, everybody, as we head into our match of the week. It is FPX versus Sooning, and our top laners are a rematch of the World's Final. And I will say, the, re the uh, initial match went the way of Nuggery in the end, but it was exciting. Both teams played towards that top side. And with this matchup, you could certainly imagine that happening again. As you rightly say, Angel on this Twisted Fate may well look to try and influence that top side of the map where he's doing B. This is not particularly customary of him. He's gone for something that doesn't have that much impact in the very early stages of the game and quite often is locked into just sitting in the mid lane. Yeah, it's the second time now we've seen Doombie take this victor, and it's actually interesting to hear Doombie talk in interviews and stuff about how he considers the mid lane meta changing and going more towards these far more orientated champions. He mentioned like specifically the Syndras, the Orianas, the Victors, and how he started to adapt that into his own gameplay, but he's not having uh, the best of times all the time of these champions, so we're still seeing him go towards like the Rises and the Rumbles and these kooky picks that make Doombie Doombie. Play onto Crisp there from on, but it's not going to lead to too much. And just bear in mind that this is a misfortune in the laning phase, which, uh, in case you guys aren't bot lane players, we've not seen it in a little while. It sort of fell out of favor. This is one of the massive priority picks way back in week one. Misfortune has lane priority against most of the AD carries in most lane matchups. You can push the wave so effectively because of that love tap passive. And so. One Funk and On are going to have to respect this level 2 that Crisp and LWX are able to get and just zone the enemy bot lane away. The really interesting thing for me looking at this early game is actually the rune choice coming in from Angel. Um, Predator picked up for the Twisted Fate. Now, usually Twisted Fate would go towards the Unsealed Spellbook, cooldown or Summoner Spell Reduction, fantastic. But also it just gives you both options towards going with the Biscuits, the Dominion Dematerializer, but more importantly, Mana Flow Band. Twisted Fate struggles quite a lot with the mana now that he doesn't have the Rod of Ages to give him that mana inherently into his kit. So I wanna see now how Angel is gonna manage his mana properly in this lane phase because when you're going this predator route you need to one get out of lane to make use of the predator but two you can't be stuck in these side or in these uh, in this mid lane because you just won't have the mana to keep up with the likes of doomby who will have access to the mana flow band so really importantly look at this one fong going for an early recall buys himself some boots but he has teleport as uh, the aphelios here this is something that we've not really seen much of uh, in the current meta. We've seen teleport AD carries before in the past, usually things like the Ezreal. But interesting that he's bringing that summoner spell to the game and obviously understanding that he's going to get the wave pushed into him a lot. So having that teleport will help him stay even in the CS department. And I, I agree. I think that's the big one, but also just health. 
Like you can see the start here from him, the, the boots with the pots gives you a lot of early regen in the lane, plus that Doran shield as well to get that regen. You can TP into lane when you get low. It's about trying to keep yourself topped up and make sure that you're not losing out on too much farm. Now already you can see this farm is starting to grow for LWX and Crisp. You're seeing the double comet, how potent that is right now. This is the struggle of this Ooh. bottom lane against the likes of LWX and Crisp. Bose found Ben in the river who was uh, getting a little bit cheeky, trying to see what he could find down in the jungle. Bo won't be able to chase down the monkey for now. He's just going to return to grabbing that Gromp for himself. You did say that Bo was a huge fan of the Gromp, so uh, we, we <laughs> finally, finally get to see that matchup happen before us. Uh, <laughs> in the meantime, though, up towards this top side, you mentioned that this, this Wukong pick for Bin, very much a, a comfort pick for him, but when it comes to how Na and Wukong both operate, there's a very similar role in the game in the way that they kind of want to be in those team fights. And I think that that's mostly what we're going to see here. I mean, we already said Tsunin, 1-4 seems to be the name of the game here. Have Angel off in a side lane, create a bit of pressure, means that Nuggery or Doom, you have to deal with it. Cool, let's join in with Bin and S, um, sorry, on being these big engage tools to set up that fight for Sooning. Um, whereas on FPX's side, they're trying to see if they can get early control. So then when they get to these team fights, they don't have to worry about Angel. They can just power through off of the, the mid game spike they get with LWX going for this lethality style on, on the Misfortune, but also with Doombie and having his Luden's Tempest picked up. Well read here by Sooning as they move down towards the bottom side, they spot Bo on the dragon. SOFM just going to hover around this bot lane so no shenanigans can happen. He's going to recall in the brush. And Sooning obviously not looking to fight right now. Not looking. I mean, let, let's be honest. We already talked about Aphelios a bunch today. This is not an AD carry that you want to be fighting around in the very early stages. It does take a while to come online. Um, hang on. That's a huge combo from Nuggery, who's already level 6 in the top side. Has been TP's right on top of him. Bit of a mistake there from Bin. Massive mistake, because now as well with where the lane is, well, you get to back as Nuggery, you could hold on to your TP, walk towards this top side, and if anyone tries to break... Oh, never mind. Never mind my entire point. I was going to say, you hold on to that for bot lane, because LWX and Crisp are going to naturally get these big advantages. So hold the TP for when Angel tries to make a play there, or yeah. whatever that might look nah, nah, like. Nah, nah, nah. But no, no, no. no, no. You're missing, you're missing okay. something there, Dagda, because uh, this is the world final rematch in the top lane. He can't <laughs> use the TP for some other lane. He's going to need that to make sure everyone knows yeah. that he's the better of the top laders. I didn't realize there was actually a ref that's counting down how long he's outside the ring. And it's like 10, <laughs> 9, and he's like, I got to TP back. I got to get back. <laughs> well, Bin is also going to be getting back there. It does have his health back. Has level 6 as well. So if he finds a window, could try and search for an all-in onto Nuggery when that Nar is exhausted. But that's the key thing. It's got to be during that exhausted phase for the Nar, because uh, the Mega Nar is pretty difficult to deal with when you're when you're in a melee. Yeah, and I mean, look, this is, at least for Bin, you can see he's having a pretty all right time. The way will be shoved back in here, but overall, he's going to be fine. The big one that I'm trying to keep an eye out for is how Angel is going to start to interact this top lane in favor of Bin, because he's been level six for a little bit of time and um, hasn't really gotten to do a huge amount right now. Has opted in for the only in Boots of Lucidity that I know Lyric has been a big fan of just for the amount of ability haste you get off them, but he needs to have an impact elsewhere because he can't just stay in this mid lane the whole time. Dragon's going to be started here by Sooning. And uh, looks like they should be able to just finish this one off. Bow is just over the wall, but realistically can't contest. Angel is in trouble. The ward nearly stops the lantern. SOFM flag and drag out to safety. Still has his flash available, so should be able to get out with this one. Doesn't even have to flash. And soon and get away with this one. FPX trying to answer. They want to find something, but Onfang actually messed up his flag and drag there, so doesn't manage to re-engage. I'm not sure he would have been able to re-engage there anyway. He's just hit six now. But now FBX. They look to set up on this bottom side. Bow off in the wings. Whether or not they can go for a dive is a different question, though. And I think they've seen better of it. <laughs> Bullet time under the time. This is some weird ability usage across this skirmish. I'm not really sure whether FBX want this, but the hook from on forces a cleanse from LWX. 
Okay, there's some weird bot name shenanigans going on, but the big thing to take note of here is that you have SOFM who's forced to back. Bo could actually turn this in towards an early Rift Herald, especially with the, the pressure that Nuggery had. But because FPX stay so long in this bot lane weird L skirmish, it's actually given time for SOFM to come back out onto the map. And now he should be able to contest, but it looks like Bo is still going to run straight towards that Rift Herald and try and use the pressure that he has with Doom being mid lane to at least get something back in favor of FPX. Yeah, the way I would describe that bot pseudo skirmish is like it's kind of like my experience on Tinder, right? Where you're you're trying to you're trying to text someone, you're trying to have a chat with someone, but you're just getting mixed signals. And I feel like FBX were just not really sure whether they wanted to commit to anything, not sure whether it's time for dinner, you know, COVID's going on right now. So they they well, just tiptoeing around the bottom side, never really committed. Just said they're just out of a recent breakup, right? I mean, it's still raw. That's Tien has true. only just left the team. They just true. aren't sure what they want to go with just yet. They're still trying to figure out themselves, find themselves, <laughs> especially with Bo coming in. But here we go. As we talked about Bo, very much an objective focus farm jungler. He's on towards this Rift Herald. SOFM has known exactly what he's doing every step of the way. Good flash from doing B to deny the engage from SOFM. A good little gold card onto Bo as well, who's fairly low on HP, but let's bear in mind, this is an Olaf that certainly doesn't struggle for sustain. In they go. Bo does get the Herald, but they're jumping straight towards Doom B. The knockup is there. Do they have the damage to finish this one off? Low HP bar, and the red buff finishes the kill. Now Bo trying to escape, but SOFM, he's just waiting for the Ragnarok to go before the flag and drag comes on through. Nuggery over the wall, gets himself out. You know what, Suning are happy with that one. They take a pick, but they trade it for a Herald. And it's a big mistake coming through actually from Crisp in that bottom lane. They'd shoved in the bot lane as FPX. They could have moved that support up towards the top lane and actually had the numbers advantage for this play. Instead, though, it's on who traditionally when you're threshing Aphelios, you don't get to roam from a bottom lane, but he's the one who gets there first. He's the one who's able to follow up on a lot of that damage and set up that kill going over in favor of Sunni. However, Rift Herald does go across towards Bo, so I want to see now what Bo can do with this to get some of that gold back in favor of FPX. It does feel like right now it's FPX deciding how the game is going to be played and Sooning matching them. And here we go, Bin looking for an all-in on the top side there. Commits the Cyclone to Nuggery, who's about to turn into that Mega. They're going to dive. They might look for the dive. I mean, you've got the TP here from Angel if they wanted to, but... Um, uh, I don't know. It doesn't. You look can't like it dive Me Mega Nar, man. It's just there's just no way. That's suicide. <laughs> I mean, you've Nuggery got a lot of Mega CC Nar, there. No less. You have a lot of CC. You've got the knock up from like, SFM. You've got the the gold card coming through from Angel. I don't this know. Is, this that... is where you and me differ, man. Like, hey, no matter who you are, you dive Nuggery when he's turning into Mega Nar. Like, this guy eats dives for breakfast. There's just. There's no way that that ends positively for Zuni. I just, I just want to see someone put Nuggery behind. Like when I looked against OMG <laughs> and New, he was 42 CS ahead of New in that lane. Well, you, he's played a unique champion in every single game. He's up to eight unique champions right now for Nuggery. Like it doesn't matter. This guy just seems to pull things out of the woodwork. Cause like, yeah, I'm going to try this today. And it just works out beautifully. Someone needs to put Nuggery in his place. Like we can't have the LCK styling on us in the top lane so heavily. But honestly, look, Nuggery's the best top lane in the world. I don't think anyone's going to contest yeah. that. It's just, it's just someone anyway, has to do something. God damn it. <laughs> Dagda, you don't have to worry about it because he's not an LCK top laner. He's an LPL top laner and he's the true, best that there is. True. Once again, LPL best in the world will just deny everything that happened in October. Um, moving on from that painful subject, let's take a look at the scoreboard for a second because this is an exceptionally even game so far. And let's bear in mind that what we said about Sooning was if they fall behind early, which they have with people camping bin, they really, really struggle. But there's been very little pressure on Angel and on Huanfong, which is kind of the weakness that we were talking about before the game. Yeah, I mean, look, the, the gold lead is going to go in favor of FPX with this push, though. Should be able to survive, though. It's just going to grab a couple of plates. Herald will be cleaned up. Nuggery goes in onto Bin. Cyclone used as well, but Nuggery, he's alone in this one. The CC chain is massive. Has flash available, but he knows in this 2v1, he's actually going to commit the flash for this one. No way does he get out of this. Nuggery, how does he do it? So most people would have flashed over the wall there like to try and do like the direst flashes, I suppose, but 
Angel was the only one who had an answering flash in the top lane. So instead, he just flashes away from Bin, knows that Bin can't flash or follow him because his own summoner spell is down, and Nuggery is able to escape away. Nuggery is also going for a very split push oriented build in this top lane. You can see he's going to go towards that stride breaker. We're getting our 1v1 that we were cheated out of at Worlds. This is going to be Nuggery versus Bin. They're all in on this split push where they want to be going toe to toe. I'm excited for how this develops because Nuggery, I'm not going to lie, Bin, he's, he's getting the best here a little bit. Now, I have been no kills, though, and that's important because nobody's fallen behind. There is no significant advantage in that top side. So when it comes to that 1v1, it is completely even right now, and that's the way that we want it to be. In terms of the gold overall, still fairly even, but it is 500 in favor of FPX is <laughs> a very liberal use of the Gale Force there from LWX. I've never really seen it used just for harass, but I guess when the game is going at this kind of pace, it makes sense to just use it for damage. Yeah, and it's, it's the story of this lane as well, right? I mean, they are poked. They are just trying to whittle you down bit by bit. So the Gale Force can kind of fit into that <laughs> as well. Um, but I'm kind of surprised to see LWX going towards the, the Gale Force build again, just because oftentimes when I see this um, Comus build on the Misfortune, it is the more lethality oriented build where you go towards the Eclipse and you just become a CC boss. Oh, sorry, not CC bot, ultimate boss to follow up on the CC that's provided by the Seraphine, by Nuggery, all these kind of guys. So it's curious to see that he is still going the more auto attack damage build when he hasn't followed up with like the press the attack rule. Man, Nuggery has no respect for his elders. Recalling on the ward, just like tapping that recall before he finishes it off. He knew that SF man was hanging around there, but he doesn't care. Um, so very nicely done here by Nuggery as he grabs that first tower of the game as well. That's going to skyrocket him up the gold chart. He's feeling pretty comfortable with his gold lead up there. And I think that's about 5,000 gold lead. That he has up over bin because of all those tower plates he was able to get for himself and because of finishing that tower as well he's gone for the stride breaker build on this gnar see uh, the, the toying with the idea of a play on this bottom side of the map but once again this is the kraken slayer out from Huan Fong. this is the the very standard aphelios build that we see into the hurricane likely into the ie looking for those three items but Bo wants to change that fact as he moves into this bottom side and actually gets a flash out from on very nicely done from on mechanically that he gets the uh essentially two flashes for one as he pulls one from the extra distance there i do want to highlight Bo though quickly dagda if you've got a second here because Bo has taken both of uh sofm's recent buffs he's built himself a 30 cs lead well don't think i have time because Nuggery is in trouble. Actually, he's not. Because the mid lane priority of doing B, he can just walk down. Yeah, he's completely fine. Huan Fong now, bullet time under the tower. On is on it. Because he pulls his AD carry out to safety. This is going to be a second tower now for FBX. You know, that, that, that ancient strength that FBX often showed is in the tempo plays. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. But this is why Nuggery fits so well in this team. Like, the amount of pressure Nuggery draws from the top lane and still, by some miracle, manages to get out of these plays. I mean, we've seen it here on the NAR. There was that Gragas play where he's the secret agent and just managed to skedaddle away while five members were chasing them through the enemy jungle. Like, this is the Nuggery special. And when you get into this situation where everyone has been drawn top, you can go and make these plays on the bot side. And this is where FPX have been able to get a lot of their leads. On the opposite side for Sunin, though, it's kind of more of the same from what has been the steady decline from Sunin. They have Angel here who can make these teleport plays. We've seen him make one play in the 18 minutes of this game, and it didn't even work out. And now that we have Sword Art off this team, it feels like that early pressure has really just gone from Sunin. We don't have SOFM linking up with On in the same way that he did with Sword Art, playing towards Bin in that top side. And as a result, when you had Sunin ahead in nearly 57% of their games at 50 minutes in summer, they're now never ahead <laughs> at any point in time. They're, they've just been really, really set behind. They're third lowest in first blood. They have the lowest first terror rate. They have the lowest herald rate. And they have a lead of 15 in 14% of their games. 1-4, yeah. 14%. It's, it's not a good look, is it? It is not a good look for Sooning, and it pains me to say that out loud on broadcast, but there you go, I've said it now. 
Uh, Juan Fong has just lanterned into the enemy team. Forced to flash on that one. On doesn't have his flash available, though. He's taken down. In goes SOFM. They're jumping into this fight one by one. SOFM trying to buy time as Juan Fong does get one kill for himself, but that just is not worth it. It's not worth losing the entire game for the singular kill. Bin does manage to answer at least a little bit, but the Herald's still pushing. This is going to be an inhib, surely. This is an inhib pre-20 minutes. Like, this is absolutely insane. And again, this is just Zunin losing it. Like, not playing to their composition, which is, hey, we want to get out on the map early. We've even opted in towards the Predator on Angel to make these early plays happen. And But it's FPX who are making the map plays, the cross-map plays, the 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 teleport plays. Like, FPX are the ones being proactive here, which is not what I expected at all. Here we go. So... <laughs> Maybe overzealous on this lantern as the play starts. Good flash from Hon Fong, but yeah, then, but, I mean, Suning just overcommit. Yeah, look how spread out you are. I mean, Angel, he gets the destiny in, but look how far away he is from the play. You're not stronger than FPX in a 5v5 fight because you are about playing side lanes and looking for a pick as Suning. So the fact you're even attempting to do this when FPX are this grouped up death ball is going to be a disaster for you. And don't forget, like, we talked about already how Gore Drinker coming into this meta has enabled Olaf so much more. You give him a Seraphine who's providing CC over the top thanks to her ultimate, who's giving him speed ups, who's slowing down anyone who's chasing. Like, Olaf is enabled so much by Crisp on this Seraphine that he becomes an army unto himself. So when you start to then already have a struggling teamfight composition with a very bolstered up jungler and carries on FPX side, it becomes very, very difficult for Sunny to even approach FPX. And I will say, one thing I did notice in the replay, Huan Fong actually played quite nicely on the Aphelios to turn around one kill during all of that skirmishing, but 4-3 to three on the scoreboard, the lead, 3,000 for FPX, and they want to expand that as they just begin the Baron straight off of the bat here. TF all used here. Angel just going to regroup with the rest of his team. He's got a gold card, but he's just going to take a laser from doing B. Baron down to 3,000 as soon. Try and encroach on the play, but this is the 5v5 the FBX would love to take. Meganar about to fall off, but so is the Baron. SOFM into the pit. It goes for the steal, and he finds it as well. SOFM getting away with it once more. Bo has isolated himself from the team, but oh, the ult just out of range on that one. Sooning, they get away with it. Zero casualties. You don't need to risk that as FPX. You just stop the DPS, deal with SOFM in the pit, and then you can turn back towards the Baron. But Bo, the new rookie coming in, decides he wants to risk it against SOFM. And the veterancy, that experience, comes out on top for Sooning. Let's be honest. SOFM, he always wins these smite fights. So let's take another look at the setup for Sooning. Very intelligently pressure onto this and, then and there's just SOFM nothing you can do here yeah sofm goes into the pit as fpx here you turn on to sofm still about 1500 health there you can't burst that down as sofm but instead look at bow he thinks i've got one level advantage that gives me the uh the smite fight but one's been found hang on <laughs> back to live and suddenly there's a pick nuggery wants a little bit of more as well he has his ultimate available and he's in meganar but fortunately can't quite close the gap I wish we'd seen the context there. I wish we had seen how that kicked off. But that is a terrifying prospect because with an open inhib in the mid lane, FPX are going to be able to find at very least that. They've got a wave on the bot side as well. I'm actually really curious to look at Nuggery's builds just because when we traditionally see the um, the Stride Breaker, we think about it as a the, the split side lane split push. However... This is actually really smart. He's gone for the Dead Man's Plate second. So he's getting a huge amount of move speed. The Mythic Passive on Stride Breaker is giving them that move speed as well. And it's now giving him the ability to chase down uh, onto Sooning. Because one of the big things here is like when you've got the, the disengage coming through from the Thresh, you've got like SOFM can tank a little bit and then disengage himself using the Flag and Drag. It can be a bit tricky to lock down Sooning. But with the sheer amount of move speed that Nuggery has here, he just chases folks down and then has Crisp come in over the back with that long range ultimate we were talking about to set up these fights it's why i think we saw on get picked off there it's just how quickly nuggery can actually close that distance when he's got this build it's definitely uh terrifying to go up against a speedy meganar not the kind of situation that Hornfunk wants to find himself in 
And you can see a Mikhail's has actually been picked up by On just for that specific situation. If Huan Fong is ever caught out by anything, immediately, Mikhail's Lantern, get him out of there. On is literally just Huan Fong's hired bodyguard. That's all he is at this point. Sooning, though, when we look at this next dragon fight, need to give Huan Fong more time. He needs to get that Infinity Edge completed. So for Sooning, I would like to see them instead forego this next dragon. You instead move Angel up towards this top side, try and create these longer lanes, try and get some of these outer turrets down so you can actually enact this one four split push we were talking about. Because otherwise, if you try and contest here, you end up in a 5v5 fight. You're not at your carry's full strength. You're also not at a uh, compositional strength either. And you'll end up losing the dragon and the fight and give you more control to FPX. I do just want to quickly bring up a concept that was talked a lot about a year or two ago. And that's that when we look at where Sooning is in the game or what they actually want to achieve in this game, it's getting Huang Fong ahead, right? FPX can't really utilize the super minions that are being pushed in this mid lane. Aphelios has a Kraken Slayer. He can easily clear these super minions. They're, they've kind of accidentally funneled an extra 90 gold in towards this Aphelios every single minion wave. He's going to happily just sit there in the mid lane and clear those up. And it's a concept that a couple of people have talked to is that uh, I know LS was very prominent for this and I know Lyric brought this conversation up as well before is that oftentimes you don't really want to, especially the mid lane inhibitor, take that down early because you can just give a bunch of extra gold in towards these carries because you get the 90 gold point clean that super creep. Whereas the amount of pressure you can get towards a Baron or towards a dragon is pretty minimal. So I do agree well, that in certain situations like this, it may not have been worth it. Yeah, yeah might not be worth it any more for Sooning though, because this bot tower is going down. TP from Bin, they want the fight. As SOFMs already start things off, but the charm onto Bin denies his engage, denies his knock up, and he's just kicked out the other side of the fight. Can't do anything. Great Lantern though, and Sooning still surviving for so damn long in these skirmishes. Hook onto Nuggery, the box is there to disengage as well, but FBX will claim their prize. They don't need the kills. They just need this inhibitor. This is so well done by FPX. That's two inhibitors down now. And four minutes until this dragon, a minute until this Baron, FPX can rejoice, spend their gold, come back out onto the map and control it from the get-go once again. Like this has been so well executed by FPX. A bow? Oh, it's been caught here. The hook comes out as well. Ragnarok is on court. <laughs> That's it. A reason. What is the heal? What is that? It doesn't matter, <laughs> but <laughs> that was like, so literally he was dead and he went to full health. So the reason Olaf has been nerfed at 11.2 is that the W for Olaf that increases your healing increases the healing you get from Gore Drinker, which is why he's become so obnoxious with this Gore Drinker item. And that was a little taste of what is possible that's, when you've got several okay, people around does, you. It's that's not, not. That's okay. why we're getting the nerf. That's why 11.2 is necessary. Either way, though, rookie and a bit of a rookie mistake. Bo coming in for his first game, lazy recall, not going the full way back to his team, and a nice job from Angel there to catch him out, which does slow down the ability for FPX to set up for this Baron. It gives a lot of vision towards Sooning, but still again, yeah. Sooning don't really have waves in their area to try and contest. You've got Super Creeps mid, but Top Wave is also pushing in favor of FPX. You're still struggling to try and draw FPX away from the Baron area. Yeah, we do have three items now on Huan Fong, but I want to highlight something in the item builds. And I want you to elaborate a little on this dagger as well, because Angel, interestingly, has gone for that rapid fire cannon as his second item after a proto belt. Sure, he's really good at landing gold cards at this point, but he does no damage whatsoever. Yeah, and he's heavily reliant on Huan Fong to be that damage source. It's also, again, having to go towards the tier, because as we talked about, not having the mana flow banned, like his build has just been so far delayed. 3k on the Baron as they... We're here again, and SFM is in the pit again! Twice in a row, he gets the Baron for himself, but can they get the team fight is the question. Huan Fong is knocked into the team, but the bullet time takes him down! Bin desperately trying to salvage this team fight, but does he have the damage? The Gore Drinker keeps him alive, the Lantern is warded, and FBX take more. Three kills, and they've got supers. They've got supers and bots, supers and mid, Baron up, FPX are looking to shove down mid lane. It's a 2v3 to try and hold on to this game as soon. Still got 15 seconds on SOFM before he returns to the map. 
Doom B and LWX more than capable of finishing this inhibitor off. But because of that Baron steal from SOFM, once again, they hold on to this game. And this entire game, they've been just holding on. But look at the gold difference stack there. It's only a thousand between these two teams. It's so incredibly close, but it's just the, the tempo and the pressure that FPX have. And you can see we're actually going right the way back. SOFM looking again, getting that Four miracle CD steal. HP. God damn, SOFM has been holding on tight to this game for Sunim. But unfortunately for them, the team fight is just way too strong. And I look, I'm coming back to this point for Angel. I, I don't like this from Angel, the, the Predator. Yeah. I can understand where you're coming from, but having to go towards this Archangel staff now as well. He's heavily reliant on this Q being his main source of damage, whereas I think the Lich Bane is just much more consistent, uh, gives you that split push pressure. And if you're going to play TF like this front to back style, like we're seeing here, why the hell are you picking TF? Pick a Syndra, pick an Orianna, pick a team fighter. Like your whole point as Angel is to be this side lane split push pressure. And you can't do that really without a Lich Bane. So I don't get it. And even the Predator from the get-go, like, he doesn't get out of lane and do anything either. Like, this this TF right. is not working for Angel. Dagda, I'm going to distract you from the TF. We've got 12 seconds until Ocean Soul comes up for FPX, and Bin is on a flank alongside Angel. The ult is going to come out from Angel quite early on this one as the rest of Sooning collapse as well. They're going to charge straight into enemy territory. Angel's in trouble, has to use the ult, will slide out, oh, kept and Bin hasn't been spotted. If Bin has no flash though, and there is a ward in the bush, it's still going to be tough for him to get in here and get on towards FPX. They've now spotted him, and you can see that FPX have started to retreat. All right, Nuggery turning into Meganar, trying to get into the back line. In goes Angel to distract in the meantime. Bullet time, not going to be enough for this fight from SOFM. The guy cannot miss. Into the fight they go, though. Can they win this one? It's all or nothing. Keep your eyes on Huan Fong. He's the only damage on the side of Suning. Going straight on towards Bo. Has a lot of damage, but does he survive the fight? Taken down in the end and on falls as well. 3v3 now as Bin tries to chase down Nuggery, but he's just going to kite this one away. Angel getting crushed under the weight of fbx triple kill for lwx and that's gonna be game it is gonna be game point for fpx after a beautiful fight nuggery smacks him with the three man nar ultimate and from that point on it's a field day for fpx Sooning, you had no right to be staying in this game as long as you did sfm tried his hardest but fbx will come out on top can SOFM get the MVP even though he lost the game? Is that a thing yeah, that can happen I, in League I of Legends? I don't know. I really wish. Regardless, FBX take themselves a win here in game number one. And what an exciting way to start our match of the week here. Sooning showing that they definitely have some strength as a team, but 